shell comments are not exactly the most easiest, to, you know, technology to use. Even though they, they give uh, an incredible power to those who know how to, to, to use them, they're still quite cumbersome sometimes and, uh, and, um, and sometimes not that uh, straightforward to use. The notion of pipe is very powerful, but uh, sometimes, you know, it takes a little bit of experience to be able to use uh, uh, the pipe in the most efficient way. And so uh, back in the days when I decided to implement uh, a new Lisp, I wanted to have those, you know, shell possibilities, but in Lisp. And this is how I came up with this idea of developing not only just a, a Lisp interpreter, there's so many of them, uh, you know, around, but something that would be a bit more sophisticated than just a Lisp interpreter. And I started to play with all oh, those very weird, you know, uh, characters that you can use to control how your um, your um, your uh, window is going to display characters. And so I implemented a complete new shell around Lisper, but I discovered that implementing that, uh, that shell was not enough. I could do something much more efficient and much more interesting with it. So I'm going to present, uh, you know, some of those innovations. For instance, this is the most, you know, I would say traditional kind of prompt you can have, a kind of shell you can have for programming language. So you can do things like, such as, you know, implementing some kind of very straightforward Lisp expression, and then the system will take that Lisp expression and will execute it. But what is interesting in the, in the case of Lisp is that you can go a bit further. For instance, there's the exclamation mark. The exclamation mark is a kind of macro which introduces something very specific behind it. If you use the exclamation mark as a prefix, then you can end up, you can add, you know, a very straightforward um, shell command. So let's say, for instance, say ls-l. And as you can see, the system simply executed that command and display the output. But let's have a look on this output because it's not that, Obvious in the first, um, you know, if, uh, if you, you have a look on it um, at a first glance. There are parentheses all around it. What this comment generated is not just a comment. What it did generate is a list. And, and if you want to store that list into a variable, then all you have to do is to use this prefix again, this exclamation mark, then you add the variable, the equal sign, and you can add your ls-l. Comment. And this time, the result is in V. And if I have a look on what is the type of V, you can see that it's a strings, which means a vector, a list of strings. And I can extract elements from that strings using the very basic, you know, call CDR commands that are so common in Lisp, which means and this is where, you know, the things are much more interesting, which means that, in fact, you can iterate, modify, extract information from that list. And so any Unix command that you would execute, in this case, we are in a macOS environment, but, you know, Unix commands are exactly the same. macOS is just a kind of variation on Unix, if you want. But what is interesting is that all those Unix comments become, uh, you know, much more than just a Unix comment. The output is transformed into something that Lisp can manipulate. And what is even more interesting is that if I have a look on the history of those comments, you can see when I say that this exclamation mark was con some kind of macro, you can see it. Here, dash ls, oh, sorry, uh, exclamation mark ls dash r was transformed into comment with this very common as a string. And in the case of v equal ls dash r, we have exactly the same idea, but here we use the set q comment, which is a way to store the execution of a, of a, of a, of a, of a comment into a variable. And we can go, you know, a bit further than that, because Lisper contains its own interpreter, but also its own editor. And so you can launch the command edit, and then you jump into an editor. So let's say that all you want to keep is the first command, 
and the second one, and then we will simply display V, and we can store it. Let's call it commons.lisp. And then to jump back to the shell, all you have to do is to press Ctrl C. And that's it. And we've, if we want to exit the, uh, the interpreter, we can do a command D. And now I have my, my file, commons.lisp, that was created. And I can execute it. And again, as you can see, the system was able, in fact, to extract the, the to execute the ls-r command and to display the output for you. Now, what is even more interesting is that Lisper can also be used in a pipe. So you can use dash p, p for pipe, and then you can add a command. So, for instance, we're going to extract. Um, or to display um, the whole uh, the whole line, which is L zero. Okay, so of course this is so impressive that uh, most of you, you know, have started uh, shaking in your seat, thinking, "Oh my God, this is so impressive." Yeah, no, I'm joking. Um, so basically, what is going on is that um, Lisper works a little bit like Awk. Awk was a language that was invented by in the end of the sixties. And it's a language which is used, you know, in a pipe fashion in the same way as Lisper. And it had a very weird way to split the output. So each of the different fields separated by a, a, a tab or a white character can be, you know, stored in a specific uh, variable. And in the case of Lisper, this is exactly what you, you, you see. So L0 is the full line. But L1, L2, L3, L4 are the different fields. So we're going to use a print in this case. So if I do L2, L1, L, L3, L5, L7, then in that case, you can see that only a part of the output was uh, actually split. And what is interesting is that, for instance, L5 is the, the size of the file. So we don't need any print here. We're just going to return the L5 uh, value. So L5 uh, read, read, sorry, uh, reads as this is the fifth field in the output. So if we count one, two, three, four, five. And this is the reason we have all those values. Now, in the case of Lisper, we can do something a little bit different. We can say also, well, I want to, to prepare something in advance. So I'm going to do a PB. And PB means beginning, pipe beginning. So we're going to do something which will be executed before executing the, the dash, path, dash, dash pipe itself. We're going to create an R variable as a list. And then we're going to push this variable into R, and here it is. And in this case, what happened is that the system automatically transformed each of these fields, extracted each of those fields, and pushed this value into R. And then it displayed the, um, uh, the, uh, the list at each stage, because push simply returns the, uh, the the list itself once the element has been pushed into, into it. And so we can do also things which are very uh, interesting. For instance, we could say, well, okay, R should be actually a list of integers. And in this case, you can see that instead of having strings, which was the default value, we now have integers and the empty strings was replaced by zero. And now we have a list of integers. So if we have a list of integers, we can do something else. We can sum them up. And so we have a dash PE, so E for end, of course, in which we can finalize our own uh, uh, extractions. Uh, note that uh, dash P has to occur before dash P. And here it is. The system extracted all those different values and summed them up. 
but there's something there are all the you know possibilities and uh, if you type in lisper dash ash you have it you know there are a lot of things that you can do and one of the things which you can also do and which is quite funny is that you can do this you can do a pipe and then you can do dash a and when you do that you jump to the interpreter itself but then you create a dash args list which contains each of the lines that were extracted from the ls dash all comment so as you can see there are many many things that you can do uh, using uh, lisper which can go way beyond what you can do with a shell habitually so thank you for for listening and please uh, find in the um, uh, descriptions the different uh, links uh, if you want to play with uh, Lisper. It's available for most platforms, Windows, um, Mac OS, Linux, I, and even WebAssembly. So there's a lot of ways to, to use it. So bye and have a nice day.